Hi guys, welcome back to Brian's Mobile One. Today, dents happen. <laughs> that was a little hard. <laughs> Brian's Mobile One. We've tried popping this one out several times, but it's got creases to where it's just going to keep popping back into the dent. To get access to the dent, we have a wheel well skirt, and we have to pull these guys out. They're like little pins that hold it in. And then you just pull this down, and then you can get your hand out under it, and push, and it'll pop the dent out. <laughs> there's still a little bit of dent there. It's a lot less than it was. As you can see, there's a big difference between that and that. But the more you can get this dent out and this crease out from behind, the better it's going to work out. And then there's one on the bottom that's really easy to get to. With this being creased the way it is, it's going to cause it to kind of fail. Uh, we call this kind of a gas can dent or gas canning and the way you get rid of that is to just basically put an x if we were to just mold a big x in that then it wouldn't have a dent anymore and that would look really cool right, <laughs> right. no but that's why <laughs> that's why body work oftentimes will have a crease or something in it it's not just for looks it actually helps the integrity of it so we're going to do that and then as part of an auto body beautification uh, day spa <laughs> kind of a thing <laughs> We're going to wet sand and buff this, and then we're going to wet sand and buff the headlights. So right now, this is going to be the before shot, where everything's just kind of hazy. Uh, we got some marks, and then we've got some dents. We're going to have the we're going to count it as this position. So we're going to fix this, this, and this, and it's going to take us about an hour. Woo. So. <laughs> kind of speed course we're not going to get this perfect to get this perfect could take between four and seven hours but to get it a whole lot better you know you can go 30 to 45 minutes and you get the most progress in that amount of time and then the fine tuning is what takes the remaining time but that looks way better you can hardly see the dent compared to all the other ones we had an hour of light to get things done pleased to report that it looks a lot better but the nice thing about it, especially with the headlights is that they're a lot safer so we're just gonna do it quick and dirty, show you guys how it's done. So stand by. So we're gonna wet sand it with vinegar water. And but you can use just water's fine too. And some sandpaper, 1500 grit. So that's 1500 sharp rocks per square inch. So one inch by one inch, 1500, so that's pretty fine. If you were to do 220 or something like that, it'd be too aggressive. So we're starting you out. It takes longer, <laughs> but it's easier to get it right the first time. From the factory, a lot of cars are base clear when it comes to paint, which means they do the base color first, and it's kind of flat looking like a primer would be, and then they put a clear coat over it that's shiny and protective. You can see the fender is really shiny, but the top of the hood is not. The same thing goes for the headlight. The headlight's made of plastic, and then they do that clear shiny coating over the top. That's what we're sanding off and that's what we're trying to fix is it's faded just like it is on the hood. So we have to remove that faded stuff or at least smooth it out so that it's consistent. Paint's basically plastic, the headlight's basically plastic, and so we're just trying to get it to where it's all even. The sun doesn't do it evenly because when this coat, clear coat's put on, it's not put on evenly. People don't wax their car evenly, so we're just trying to get rid of that splotchy stuff. So you can mask and tape this off or just be careful. Either way, you're kind of all right. If you get a little sanding on this, you can just hit it with a buffer when you go back through. Is that coming off pretty easy? Yeah. Kind of disappearing, like huh? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be careful. With some bumpers, you'll have a light colored bumper with dark paint on it. So if it's getting lighter and lighter instead of darker and darker, then you'll know to back off. So the nice thing about black is it is the easiest color ever to match. So you can even use like some gloss black engine paint or something and touch it up by spraying it into the cap and then brushing it on and then wet sanding it down to smooth. She's being really careful because if you get on the ridge, you can take off too much paint. The whole point of wet sanding it is to remove material. So there's a white paint transfer, there's white paint from something that's stuck on it, maybe another car, who knows. And we're just taking that off with the wet sandpaper. And that's going to leave the paint really dull. Then we're going to go back with the buffer and some compound, and then we're going to get the shine back on. Oh, 
That looks awesome, that's perfect. All right, now you can do this by hand. Like anything else, power tools just make it so that it goes faster, doesn't take as long, so we're gonna go that route. But you can actually take a terry cloth, like the stuff that towels are made out of, put a little of this scratch remover compound on it. I know it says scratch remover, but basically it's like fine sandpaper that brings the gloss back or takes the scratch out. So if you use a buffer, same thing, you gotta watch out for ridges, you gotta watch out for having it grab stuff. There's some skill involved in that, but you can do it by hand. But instead of taking a minute or less, or just seconds with this, doing it by hand can take several minutes, 10, 15. Still not a lot, but this is so much easier. So I just spread it around. That way when I turn this on, it's not gonna fling it off everywhere. See how it flung a little bit? So you just wanna cover everything first. <laughs> doesn't that look better so the fun thing is it doesn't take very much money or time and it just looks like we should show Kathy's face <laughs> she's like, really excited about she's, that <laughs> she's like looking at it like her eyes are all big like yeah I, I called it my racing stripe so that my, my racing stripes are gone <laughs> yeah you can always make more <laughs> so we're gonna do the same thing we don't have to change anything um, I use 3M pads Ideally, you'd want to have one for black paint, one for red paint, and one for clear stuff. But in reality, you can do it on pretty much anything and everything. So there's two ways to do this, two schools of thought. One is to put the clear coat back on over the top of it. That's what's cooked off when your headlight fades. It has clear spray paint on it from the factory. So you can put some fresh new stuff on, or you can buff it, or do a little bit of both. If you do buff it, you got to make sure you clean it with alcohol or something so that the paint will stick. Because if it's too smooth and too waxy from this, then it won't stick. Alright, so uh, as this is spinning around, it goes clockwise. You can kind of see by the curl of it. So when I'm coming across something, you just got to bear in mind, if I have this side going up into this edge, it's going to get into it. So you want to make sure you're coming down off an edge so that it doesn't catch. Otherwise it can kick back or damage something or even bend some metal. So that's something to bear in mind. So again, I just smear it all over where I want the area to be buffed. Put it where you want it, right? And then a couple of tests. Tell the first time when you wet sand it what needs it more than another place. You can see this needs a little bit more, these areas kind of need a little bit more. But already this looks way, way better than it did before. See in the camera it looks awesome. In real life you can see that there's a little bit of detail here that still needs some attention. So generally you do little circles, but if you really want to get after it, you can kind of burn into it. So I've got that one knocked down to where that'll be clean. This one's a little bit ugly. But if you keep rotating to where you've got fresh sandpaper on it, it cleans up really well, really quick. If you see a bunch of this white stuff, that means you're pulling off a lot of material. So if that's your goal and you want to get all that rotten, sun-faded stuff off, it's a good sign. If you're trying to take off a little bit and you're getting a lot like that, then you'll know to back off a little bit. You can see there's a little spot there that needs some love. You see it the most when the stuff's swirling around. It's like a stationary pebble or the sandy beach with waves hitting it kind of thing. It's the only thing not moving, not changing. As you're sanding it, you can kind of feel where it's dragging kind of feel where the roughness is. I'm being careful not to hit the bumper too much because we don't want to take the paint off if it's happy paint. Just leave it be. Kind of like Bob Ross for a minute. <laughs> happy little trees, happy paint. 
let a sleeping dragon lie. There's no, no sense in creating a paint problem if, if you can avoid it easily. So as she wipes this off, you'll notice that it's really foggy, kind of opaque. And there's no clear coat on it anymore. So you've got a little bit of an island here, a little bit here. Some of that may buff out, it may not. But it's just really, really hazy. But that's just a fine texture refracting light. Once we buff it, it'll be smooth and it'll pass light really well. We could also clear coat it at this point. I do want to sand this a little bit more. The thing is, well, if you're going to clear coat it, that's kind of for keeps. Because it takes a lot of sanding to get it back off. You want to make sure that you're really happy with it. It's a nice thing about buffing is it kind of gives you a preview. Remember how foggy and opaque it was? How clear and jewelry like it looks now? It's a lot better. So there's more wet sanding that we could, should do in this area. But as far as like a one hour car spa kind of thing, the headlights done, you know, for all intents and purposes. And then this part also looks just way, way better. Next thing to do, da -da -da -da, the dent. Step one, pop out the screw stuff. Step two, pop the dent out. <laughs> look at look at how much improvement there is just right there. So the next part of this, what I like to do, especially if somebody's starting out and learning PDR, or that's an acronym for paintless dent removal, is I'll give them a screwdriver handle and just have them work from the outside in. If you take, you ever watch people like dip stuff with a coating, I forget what the name of it is, but it's like they'll put paint on the surface of water and then they'll oh, submerge yeah, yeah, something yeah. in it and it paints it. Dents are the same way. I mean, it starts at a fine point and then it works out and out from there. So you work backwards, you start on the outer halo part of it and then work back in until it's a small little dent and then boop, you just get rid of it. So that's the strategy. <laughs> so I will kick this off and get it started. There's a crease here which means we need to push this in at the same time we push this out. So I'm just going to do that with my fingers. And what you do is you don't want to get it all at once. You just kind of sneak up on it a little bit, so to say, just a little at a time. If you go too fast, you can cause a crease that can even cause the paint to crack. But what I'm doing is I'm going in a circle and I'm pushing down with my thumb at the high spot. I just work it in a circle and I get smaller and smaller and the dent just gets smaller and smaller at the same time. Although progress is so slow you can hardly see it happening, it is happening when you look at the side by side you can see. So you can see that this is a low spot. Uh -huh. So you push out with the screwdriver with the handle part here and at the same time there's a little bit of a high spot there. So you push down with that and then you push with the screwdriver. So you just like a, you know, like the bathtub drain when stuff's going down, start on the outside and then just work your way to the middle. And just go in circles? Uh-huh. Oh. And go soft at first until you get the feel of it. And then as you feel motivated, you can go a little bit faster. But patience is the key. <laughs> So I'll go a little bit softer than that. Am I right. doing something? <laughs> if you feel like you're not doing anything, then you're doing it right. Oh, okay. To a degree. <laughs> like I said, sometimes if somebody wants to make this perfect, it can take between four hours to seven hours. Seven's a little excessive. I bet a good body tech could get it in 45 minutes or two hours, you know, if they're really experienced. But the point is, is if you push too hard or go too fast, then it's a lot harder because then you got to knock it down and if you crack the paint then you're kind of screwed. Another thing that we need to do is we need to hit that bottom lip until it's even. If you want you can take this hammer and even with the brassy part just kind of tap that back up into place. Alright as you can see it's bent down here. This is all smooth but when this dent happened this happened. So what we're going to do is take some tape and just double layer it. This helps protect the paint in a couple of different ways. When you hit something, it can shock and that can cause it to crack or come undone. If the tape's holding it flat, it's going to be a lot harder for it to shock or crack or anything. 
All right, so see where the low spot is? Fill it with your hand first. And then go ahead and take the hammer. And just tap it lightly right at the tip first. And what you want to do is match, see how this is the angle that the fender is? <laughs> Sorry, I got your glove. So it's going to end up like this, right? So we're hitting it here first, and then I kind of angle it that way. And so it matches to get the same angle. Does that make sense? Yeah. So just kind of planning ahead. So hit it right on the nose. Oh, camera. <laughs> Another thing that you can do is you can just take your hammer or your body device or whatever and just shove it into it <laughs> like that. So you can hit it and it's gonna seem it's gonna seem like you're really damaging it. You can do a couple more hits. Feel what's <laughs> left of it. Can you feel it still there? Oh yeah. So, but this is gonna do a lot to help keep this from coming back. Harder. A angry thoughts. <laughs> Good. It's a lot easier to prevent it from getting really bad really fast than it is to try to fix it, you know, if you go too hard. So you're in the right direction. One of the big advantages to being a female auto technician is the caution. But, but it's also a struggle. It's kind of a, you have to combat the caution enough to really get into it. But, you know, it's like girls are less likely to be a bull in a china closet and more likely to china be closet. precise. I've never had a closet before. Or china cabinet? China shop. China shop. I think it's shop. There you go. <laughs> You're probably right. Okay, okay. You don't keep your china in the closet? That's how I roll. Keep your china <laughs> you in the closet. <laughs> well, I think it, I'm pretty sure we don't have china, but if we did, it'd be in the cabinet. But <laughs> There you go. So looking at the dent, it's a lot less than it was. So we used to have a great big crease here and then a substantial dent. And then before that, before we popped it out, this whole thing was a big dent. You run your hand over it now, it's a little bit wavy, but most of the dent's gone. That's terrible. That part right there's still there. Yeah, that crease is gonna take some doing. So there's specialized tools, um, like there's a spoon like this. If you polish them out smooth and get them perfect, then you can use this just like the back of a screwdriver handle. A screwdriver handle kind of drags because the plastic transfers to the metal, uh, but it is safe because it doesn't scratch. If you get these smooth enough, then they're less likely to scratch. Scratches on the inner fender can result in having rust that comes through to the surface over time. And for the advanced course, look at this sucker. So if there's just a little hole that you can work through, like on the side of the trunk or a fender, you can actually get this in there and massage it in the same way, going in a circle, and then work finer and finer. So there's all kinds of tools for doing PDR. Uh, these dents are a great one to practice on or to learn it. All right, go ahead. Going with the screwdriver. This one right here is the main one that we want to get oh, I next. Oh, I see that one. So that one doesn't have any tape on it. That was like an extra bonus. Crease. There you go. Nice job. Like that? Yep. That's good. Pull this off. So now when we push on it, the whole thing doesn't collapse. Just around here. And once we correct this part here, then even that will stay pretty good. Oh. Go ahead. Don't push real hard because we're not done with it yet. But go ahead and push on that like what it took to see how the strength's back in yeah. it. <laughs> pretty cool, huh? Already. <laughs> You're doing a great job, by the way. Thanks. That looks good. I feel like I'm not doing anything, which is good, right? <laughs> it should sneak up on you and surprise you. That, the before and after pictures are huge on PDR because it's so incremental from being a mess to being nice mm -hmm. that you just don't see it as it's happening. Come stand over here and look at it. Remember how big that dent was? No. <laughs> you could fit your whole hand in it. Well, I remember how big the rib, the the, yeah. all, the whole thing was, yeah. yeah. So you don't want to go fast when you're new. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to go fast when you're experienced either. <laughs> There's definitely a Dunning-Kruger effect to PDR. I mean, what that means in a nutshell is that when you first do it, you think that you've got it mastered. And then your confidence is, like, really high. Mm -hmm. And then something goes wrong. 
or if you get humbled and then the confidence goes all the way down <laughs> on the graph and it slowly builds back up. So I'm in process of slowly building back <laughs> up is where I'm at. I've messed up enough to know that it's hard. Screwdrivers are really forgiving. You're less likely to pucker the paint you know, with something metal. But metal's way faster. It's still a little wavy, but you can... Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> the thing is, when I pop it back, I have to push really hard to get it to pop and listen to the crack of it cracking back. It wants to be in this position now. Yes. So, we'll work it a little bit more, but just about got it. How would you go about fixing the ones on the door? Do you have to take the whole door panel off? I'm glad you asked. That's going to be another video another day. Okay. You can actually use something that's kind of like a glue gun. You glue tabs to it and then pull on the tabs. And the shock, you heard this go crack. Uh -huh. The shock of it popping off actually sets the metal. Oh. So just like when you get a dent, you know, it's like it hits hard and makes it stay put. When you pop it, it pops hard and makes it stay put mm. in a flat, better way. That makes There's sense. some cool stuff. We'll have to do a video on that. If you guys want to see a video on that, comment below. It'll show actually how to do it. The fun thing about when you're training somebody or teaching somebody that's new to it is that it helps you to really break it down. If you've been doing it a long time, you take things for granted. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, duh, you do that. But if you're training somebody new, it's like you have to make it really simple and incremental. It really helps as a teacher to have somebody that's a, so, somewhat of a clean slate. <laughs> As long as they're sharp, Nash is pretty sharp. Alright. So as long as you don't move, it looks fine. <laughs> but if you move a little bit, you can see that my face gets all distorted in the reflection. So there's still a little bit of a crease there. How would you classify that dent? Would you say that it's like a 20 foot dent or a 30 foot dent? <laughs> what dent are we talking about? The first one or that the That sounds one? wrong, huh? So the way that you measure dents as a, as a body technician is how far away do you have to stand from it to have it look normal and look good. <laughs> you stand 30 foot away, then it's a 30 okay. foot dent. So the smaller the number, the better it is. So I'm, um, saying, I'm saying at night, straight on, it's about a one or a two foot dent. During the daytime, it would just depend on the lighting. So I'd say it's I'd say it's down to about a 15 foot dent instead of a 100 foot dent. You used to be able to see That's that dent sure. from 100 feet away. That's for sure. Okay. So, that it's better, but there's there's a lot of crease to come out of it still. But you look at it. There's a bunch of these. There's a bunch of little things that you'll see first. Whereas this used to be the main attraction that would just like scream out at you. Cool. <laughs> Good job. As part of this job, anywhere there's a high spot, you got to be able to take that back down. Just like math, you got addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. They kind of one does something and the other undoes it. If you get too far and you have something standing up, this takes it back down. So say on this, if I were to do something too far, but in this case it's got kind of a high spot there, so I'm going to use this. It's a soft tip, a chisel or a drift or something. You got a plastic hammer, but basically you just tap it in a little circle around the high spot and bring it back down. Just like if you have a dent, you go around the outside and work to the middle. You do the same thing on these. Just kind of work it to the middle and then uh, you can get it back flat. So this kit is not very expensive. Uh, these are the special glue sticks that come with it. This is a cactus brand that the professionals use, but there's all kinds of stuff that come with it. Um, this one I bought separate because it's easier to control. The kit comes with one like this. It's real easy, like the screwdriver handle so that you don't mess stuff up. And then you've got the tabs that you glue down. And it's got a, I put in a, a 120 volt uh, glue gun that works way better. They have a 12 volt one. But these tabs plug into there and then this thing can lift up the dent. So if you want to look into that, this is the name of it. It's called Fix That Dent. If you've got an old beater car or something you want to practice on, this is a great way to get started. And then you can kind of fill it out from there. And it's got a little alcohol spray thing that releases the glue so you can pop it back off. Lots of cool fun stuff in a little kit like this. I'll leave a link in the description below. So it's a little darker outside. We had an hour of light to get things done. And pleased to report that it looks a lot better. 
But the nice thing about it, especially with the headlights, is that they're a lot safer. So these will fade again because there's no clear coat on them. It'd be a good idea to clean and polish these up and then spray them with some clear coat. Otherwise it'll last maybe six months and then it'll be foggy again. I'm hoping to not but it'll, <laughs> it'll, but you never know. <laughs> but it, it will clean up a lot easier because that clear coat's a lot harder to wet sand. The raw material's super easy to get it cleaned back up again. But that looks way better. Can hardly see the dent compared to all the other ones. Looks good. <laughs> compared to all the other ones. That was such a left handed compliment, wasn't it? <laughs> So. You did this last thing too, you said something about my AC being broken and that we were just fixing uh, the control arm. That's my, so. that's my own neurosis of wanting to fix everything. <laughs> everything has to be perfect and it never will be so. Anyway, that's my way of letting it go. I, I pay it tribute. I'm like, this is the way it is. I see it. I know it. Whatever. Let it go. <laughs> Bonus footage at the end. <laughs>